for Bears to Dance To, S1 Reading for Understanding, Analysis and Evaluation Assessment. Before you begin this assessment, make sure that you have a copy of the passage so that you can follow along. Make sure that you have your own copy of the questions so that you will have a space to write your answers. Write your name and your teacher's name clearly at the top of your question sheet. And remember that you can pause and rewind as often as you like. First, I will read the whole passage to you. Then I will read the questions and the parts of the passage that go along with those particular questions. Henry had been impatient for the cast to be removed so that he could return to his job as the bender for Mr Hairston at the corner market. Mr Hairston had a back problem and found it hard to bend over. Henry did the bending for him, picked up whatever fell on the floor, reached for merchandise on the lower shelves to fill the customer's orders. He also had other duties, helped unload the boxes and crates that arrived from the wholesalers, stocked the shelves, bagged the potatoes in the cellar, then carried them upstairs to the produce section. Mr Hairston was proud of his produce. Fresh lettuce and carrots and spinach and such extras as parsnips and mushrooms, all of them in neat display at the rear of the store. Henry worked at the store every day after school and on Saturday mornings. Until, that is, he had broken his kneecap, tripping and falling down the bottom steps of the house just as school ended in June. A hairline fracture, the doctor had said. Nothing serious, but serious enough for a cast that enclosed his calf and knee. Mr Hairston said he would keep his job open until his knee was healed. How will you bend over? Henry had asked. I won't stock the lower shelves until you come back. You'll sweep the floors and put up the potatoes. Mr Hairston had scowled without answering. He scowled most of the time, his expression as soured as the pickles in the wooden barrel near the cash register. Five weeks later, when Henry reported to the store without his crutches ready for work, Mr Hairston merely grunted. Potatoes to bag up, he called, over the shoulder of a customer, and Henry made his way down to the cellar where a bin of potatoes awaited him. He always tried to hurry the job because the cellar was dark and damp and he often heard rats scurrying across the floor. One day a grey rat squirted out of a bag of potatoes and Henry had leapt with fright, his heart exploding in his chest. He was afraid of a lot of things. The closet door that never stayed closed in his bedroom, spooky movies about vampires, but most of all, the rats. When he came back upstairs, Mr Hairston was saying goodbye to a customer Henry recognised as Mrs Pierce, who lived on the first floor of his tenement. Smiling and nodding, Mr Hairston led her to the door and closed it softly after her. Disgusting, the wart in her chin. Hairs growing out of it, he said, returning to the register, a sneer replacing the smile. Actually, his smile was merely a rearrangement of his lips, his usual sneer turned inside out. Henry was amazed at how Mr Hairston treated his customers. The customer's always right, he proclaimed one day, as if he could read Henry's mind, but only in the store, when buying. Otherwise, they're only people. Stupid, most of them. Don't even know a bargain when they see one. So why give them a bargain? He handed Henry a candy bar, which astounded Henry, because Mr Hairston had never given him a treat. Eat, he said. Then, it was nice with the customers during the war, though. Rationing. People came running if they heard I had got butter in, or cigarettes. Henry listened, his cheeks bulging with the candy, while Mr Hairston looked off as if he were talking to himself, his voice almost dreamy. I'd make them line up, make them wait, acting like the stuff hadn't arrived yet but was expected any minute. All the time the order was here and they waited in line. I was like a dictator, the way they treated me. I was a dictator, because I had control over them. Then looking down, as if discovering Henry's presence after having forgotten him there, he said, Go to work. I don't pay you to hang around doing nothing. 
Just before closing time, while Henry was sleeping the floor, Mr. Hairston's daughter came into the store. She appeared at the back door, having descended from the tenement above where Mr. Hairston lived with his wife, whom Henry had never seen, and the girl whose name was Doris. Doris was a whisper of a girl, slender with long black curls that reached her shoulders, a bow in her hair. They always looked like the same bow, but the colours were different. Red and yellow and blue, bright and vivid colours in contrast with her pale white face, the dark eyes deep in their sockets like the windows of a haunted house. She usually came and went like a ghost, appearing suddenly and then fading away, a door closing softly behind her or the rustle of her clothing faint in the air. Sometimes he didn't see her at all, but sensed her presence somewhere in the store. She was a year ahead of him in school and when they met in the corridor, she lowered her eyes and looked away. She always carried library books in her arms. In the store, he sometimes felt those haunted eyes upon him, turned and almost saw her, then heard the back door closing softly. They had never spoken a word to each other. Whenever Mr. Hairston saw her in the store, he would order her to leave. Upstairs, he'd command, his hand pointing to the ceiling. That afternoon, the girl spoke to Henry for the first time, a brief word, hello, so brief and whispered that at first he doubted his ears. She didn't smile at him, but her expression changed, or rather, an expression of some kind filled the usual blankness of her face. He could not read that expression. As she turned away before he could return her greeting, if it had been a greeting, he noticed a bruise on her cheek, purple and ugly. What happened to your cheek? He asked, whispering for some reason. Upstairs! Mr. Hairston's voice was like thunder in the quiet store and Henry leapt with surprise as he turned to confront the store owner, whose face was dark with anger. Henry began to sweep furiously and heard the girl's footsteps fading, the door opening and closing. She fell down, Mr. Hairston said, while Henry swept the same spot over and over. Clumsy girl, always hurting herself. A later customer entered the store and Mr. Hairston turned away, cursing beneath his breath. He hated last minute customers. That night, Henry thought of Doris, who was clumsy and fell down a lot and hurt herself. He prayed to keep her safe from harm. Now that we've read the whole passage, it's time to tackle the questions. First, I'll read you part of the passage again, and then I will read you the questions that go along with it. Henry had been impatient for the cast to be removed so that he could return to his job as the bender for Mr. Hairston at the corner market. Mr. Hairston had a back problem and found it hard to bend over. Henry did the bending for him, picked up whatever fell on the floor reached for merchandise on the lower shelves to fill the customer's orders. He also had other duties, helped unload the boxes and crates that arrived from the wholesalers, stocked the shelves, bagged the potatoes in the cellar, then carried them upstairs to the produce section. Mr. Hairston was proud of his produce. Fresh lettuce and carrots and spinach and such extras as parsnips and mushrooms, all of them in neat display at the rear of the store. Question one. Why had Henry been impatient? Question two. Why did Mr. Hairston need a bender? Question 3a. Write down three things Henry did as part of his other duties. Question 3b. How does the writer's sentence construction in paragraph one draw attention to the variety of actions Henry has to carry out? Paragraph one is the paragraph that I have just read to you. When you've answered all these questions, move on to the next slide. Five weeks later, when Henry reported to the store without his crutches ready for work, Mr. Hairston merely grunted. 
Potatoes to bag up, he called over the shoulder of a customer, and Henry made his way down to the cellar where a bin of potatoes awaited him. He always tried to hurry the job because the cellar was dark and damp and he often heard rats scurrying across the floor. One day, a grey rat squirted out of a bag of potatoes, and Henry had leapt with fright, his heart exploding in his chest. He was afraid of a lot of things. The closet door that never stayed closed in his bedroom, spooky movies about vampires, but most of all, the rats. Question 4. In your own words, Describe how Mr. Hairston first greeted Henry on his return to work. Question 5. What three things did Henry dislike about the cellar? Question 6. A grey rat squirted out of a bag of potatoes. A. What is unusual about the writer's use of the word squirted in this sentence? B. Why is it a particularly suitable word to use here? When he came back upstairs, Mr. Hairston was saying goodbye to a customer Henry recognised as Mrs. Pierce, who lived on the first floor of his tenement. Smiling and nodding, Mr. Hairston led her to the door and closed it softly after her. Disgusting, the wart in her chin, hairs growing out of it, he said, returning to the register, a sneer replacing the smile. Actually, his smile was merely a rearrangement of his lips. His usual sneer turned inside out. Henry was amazed at how Mr. Hairston treated his customers. The customer's always right, he proclaimed one day as if he could read Henry's mind, but only in the store, when buying. Otherwise, they're only people, stupid most of them, who don't even know a bargain when they see one. So, why give them a bargain? Question 7a. Describe Mr. Hairston's behaviour and attitude towards Mrs. Pierce while she was in his shop. 7b. Explain fully how these changed once she had left. Question 8. Write down the one word the writer uses which most clearly shows that Mr. Hairston's smile was not genuine. Question 9a. What is unusual about the writer's sentence construction in paragraph 11? Question 9b. What does the writer's use of this construction suggest about Mr. Hairston's character? He handed Henry a candy bar, which astounded Henry because Mr. Hairston had never given him a treat. Eat, he said. Then, it was nice with the customers during the war, though. Rationing. People came running if they heard I had got butter in, or cigarettes. Henry listened, his cheeks bulging with the candy, while Mr. Hairston looked off as if he were talking to himself, his voice almost dreamy. I'd make them line up, make them wait, acting like the stuff hadn't arrived yet but was expected any minute. All the time the order was here and they waited in line. I was like a dictator the way they treated me. I was a dictator, because I had control over them. Then, looking down as if discovering Henry's presence after having forgotten him there, he said, Go to work! I don't pay you to hang around doing nothing. Question 10a. What was Mr. Hairston's real reason for thinking it was nice with the customers during the war? Question 10b. Give an example of his behaviour which supports your answer to A. Question 11. While talking about wartime, Mr. Hairston looked off, his voice almost dreamy. What else did he do which suggests he had been daydreaming?
Just before closing time, while Henry was sweeping the floor, Mr. Hairston's daughter came into the store. She appeared at the back door, having descended from the tenement above, where Mr. Hairston lived with his wife, whom Henry had never seen, and the girl, whose name was Doris. Doris was a whisper of a girl, slender with long black curls that reached her shoulders, a bow in her hair. It always looked like the same bow, but the colours were different, red and yellow and blue, bright and vivid colours in contrast with her pale white face, the dark eyes deep in their sockets like the windows of a haunted house. She usually came and went like a ghost, appearing suddenly and then fading away, a door closing softly behind her, or the rustle of her clothing faint in the air. Sometimes he didn't see it at all, but sensed her presence somewhere in the store. She was a year ahead of him in school, and when they met in the corridor, she lowered her eyes and looked away. She always carried library books in her arms. In the store, he sometimes felt those haunted eyes upon him, turned and almost saw her, then heard the back door closing softly. They had never spoken a word to each other. Question 12a. Doris is described as a whisper of a girl. What do you think the writer means by this? Question 12b. In paragraph 14, that is the paragraph at the top of the slide, what comparison does the writer use to describe her eyes? Question 12c. Write down three other words and expressions from paragraph 15, that is the paragraph at the bottom of the slide, which the writer uses to convey a similar idea about Doris. The next two questions are based on the same two paragraphs that I just read to you on the previous slide. Question 13. Write down the two separate words which best convey the contrast between Doris's face and her bows. Question 14. Give two pieces of evidence which suggest that Doris was shy. That afternoon, the girl spoke to Henry for the first time. A brief word, hello. So brief and whispered that at first he doubted his ears. She didn't smile at him, but her expression changed. Or rather, an expression of some kind filled the usual blankness of her face. He could not read that expression. As she turned away before he could return her greeting, if it had been a greeting, he noticed a bruise on her cheek purple and ugly. What happened to your cheek? he asked, whispering for some reason. Question 15a. What unusual thing happened that afternoon? Question 15b. Explain in your own words why Henry doubted his ears. Question 15c. Write down an expression from later in paragraph 17, that is the paragraph at the top of the page, which repeats this idea of doubt. Question 16. When Henry asked Doris about her cheek, he whispered for some reason. What reason do you think he had for whispering? Mr. Hairston's voice was like thunder in the quiet store, and Henry leapt with surprise as he turned to confront the store owner, whose face was dark with anger. Henry began to sweep furiously and heard the girl's footsteps fading, the door opening and closing. She fell down, Mr. Hairston said, while Henry swept the same spot over and over. Clumsy girl, always hurting herself. A later customer entered the store and Mr. Hairston turned away, cursing beneath his breath. He hated last-minute customers. That night, Henry thought of Doris, who was clumsy and fell down a lot and hurt herself. He prayed to keep her safe from harm. Question 17. 
Mr. Hairston's face was dark with anger. What other expression is used in this paragraph to show his anger? Question 18. Henry began to sweep furiously, and Henry swept the same spot over and over, are both quotes from this section of the passage. What do Henry's actions tell you about how he felt? Question 19. She fell down, Mr. Hairston said. From your reading of the whole passage, do you believe Mr. Hairston? Give a reason for your answer. Congratulations. You have reached the end of the assessment. Make sure that you've attempted to answer every question and pause or rewind this video as long as you need to to make sure that you've got all your answers down the way you want them. Well done.